things have gotten to the point now where people are getting doxxed, they are getting assaulted. Um, here in Oregon, where I live, there have been people drug out of their homes. There have been people shot in the street of Portland for supporting President Trump. Um, there have been LGBT people that don't agree with the leftist narrative that have been threatened and assaulted. So this leftist ideology does not bring people together. It's not fixing anything. It's not helping anyone. Hello, hi, namaste, and welcome to my walk away story. Thanks for joining the video. Um, my name is Sahila. I'm 28 years old. Um, presently, I am a student and researcher of Hindu and Vedic culture, and I'm studying to be a Hindu priest. Um, for about the last uh, nine years, I've worked in um, the field of activism and social work and charity work. Uh, this last year, um, I've worked as a community health worker here in the state of Oregon, and um, prior, I worked for about seven, eight years in San Diego working with LGBT homeless youth and working on issues like uh, gay marriage and banning conversion therapy for minors in the state. Um, so, uh, <laughs> where do I go from there? I'm pretty nervous. Um, so I'm a transsexual person, obviously, trans activists in the, the name of the video. Um, if you don't know what that means, um, I, uh, when I was born, I was born a boy and I was raised a boy. But from my earliest memories, from when I was probably like three or four, I just always, it was just a very self-evident thing for me that I just knew I was a girl or knew I was a woman. Um, and when I was a teenager, I um, transitioned so I could live like a woman um, or live as a woman or just live as myself, which I have been doing for um, many years now. Very happily transition, no regrets, and um, engaged to my very lovely, handsome fiance. So um, life is good. But <laughs> anyways, it wasn't always like that. Um, and uh, life used to be really hard. Um, when I lived in San Diego, uh, on and off for about six years, I was um, a homeless youth and I was also um, a survival sex worker. So um, for a number of years, it was very, very difficult for me um, to even just put down roots and take care of myself. But even in the midst of all those years, I was very dedicated to my trans activism and LGBT activism. And um, I dedicated, you know, a lot of my energy and many years of my life to the LGBT community. And it's very unfortunate that, um, uh, you know, coming out now saying that I'm leaving the left, that all of the recognition that I have received um, from any of the agencies or institutions, you know, I, I, I would probably be very much severely um, dragged through the mud, you know, for having left the left. And, um, you know, when people say, they, they hear about trans activism, it's, they hear trans activist and it's almost like a dirty word, you know, because they think it's some like super radical leftist, crazy angry person and all they usually are angry people on Twitter or Tumblr or angry people online. They don't actually do much. Um, so most people have a bad idea of uh, or a distasteful idea of what it is to be a trans activist. Um, and I don't blame them. You know, I've encountered so many trans activists myself that have been pretty insufferable people. So I, I know, I'm sorry. <laughs> and that's why I'm here making this walk away video because things have gotten so absurd and so insane um, in the left, but especially in my community of the LGBT community um, that I'm not welcome anymore and I just have to leave. Um, and you know, I've done so much work over the years. I've been, uh, and I just want to tell you this to, to give weight to my experience that I you know, nobody can say that I didn't do my part, that I wasn't dedicated, that um, that I'm not like some sellout to the right, because I'm not a Republican, I'm not a Democrat, I'm an independent um, 
I don't even like politics, but it's just important to me that I just do important work. It's very important um, for me personally to be engaged in, you know, social work or doing work that is uplifting or helping people. Um, but anyways, again, to, to just to add weight to my experience in my work and my voice, on two separate occasions, I was um, awarded and recognized um, uh, or given two certificates of recognition by uh, Senator Tony Atkins. Tony Atkins, I believe, was the first um, openly lesbian senator to the U.S. Um, I've met her a couple times in San Diego, lovely lady, and um, two awards from her. Um, I was also awarded on two separate times, um, two separate awards from the California um, State Assembly from Todd Gloria. He's openly gay man running, I believe he's running for um, San Diego mayor now. So two awards from him and uh, an award from the San Diego Unified School, uh, School Board. I did a lot of work with um, a lot of the schools around San Diego County. Um, I was awarded um, the Anne Frank Humanitarian Award by the Florida Holocaust Museum. And let's see, I have a couple more awards here from city council members of San Diego. So, oh, here's one more. This is important too. Um, PFLAG, Parents and Friends of Lesbians and Gays. I believe it's the oldest LGBT organization in existence. It was one of the first LGBT organizations to pop up. I believe the founder, I think she passed away a couple of years ago, but it started out as, just like it says, parents and friends who would get together to um, help them uh, process having a gay, a gay child or a lesbian child or a transgender child. So it was kind of like a support group for the whole family and everyone involved. So I was actually um, a featured speaker at uh, PFLAD's PFLAG's Launching Leadership Award Ceremony. I was given a big scholarship and award there. Um, so again, I don't say these things to be prideful, but in the hopes that if all of these big important people have given me all these big shiny pieces of paper, um, maybe people will listen to me. Um, but you know, things are not what they used to be a number of years ago. Even a year ago, things, are, uh, things have gotten significantly more radical. Um, a number of years ago, it was still acceptable to have the view that um, a person is a person. First and foremost, they are an individual, and you judge or per, uh, interact with that person based on the content of their character, right? Um, what Martin Luther King used to say all the time, we have to judge people by the content of their character, not the color of the skin, not their privileged status, not their oppressed status, not their sexual orientation, or their gender identity or their income, we look at people as individuals and we look at the content of their character. Unfortunately, now, these days, the left has almost across the board um, accepted uh, a very fringe radical ideology. You've probably heard of it as uh, you know, critical race consciousness or critical theory. And they have chosen this to be their driving ideology for their movement. Now, so critical consciousness or critical theory is a very dangerous fringe ideology that has its roots back in cultural Marxism back in the day. There's a lot of, you know, uh, lectures and videos and you can look on YouTube about this, you can go on Google, there's a lot of different resources. But to sum it up, critical consciousness is a way um, to train yourself to see the world. And it claims that it's a liberatory uh, uh, system. So it any form of oppression that someone is going through, if you apply the critical consciousness lens, you can liberate, you can liberate yourself or liberate others. So critical consciousness or critical theory can be broken up into what well, I would say three main denominations or three main groups. It's very much like a religion. So just like we can say, for example, uh, Judaism, Christianity, and Islam would all fa fall under the umbrella of Abrahamism. Uh, critical consciousness has its denominations in main groups as well. So. Uh, the three main groups of uh, critical consciousness are critical race consciousness, 
critical sex or gender consciousness, and critical class consciousness. Now, these days, everybody's going crazy over the critical race consciousness. That is the, the strongest denomination, the loudest voice of all the critical consciousness or critical theory. Secondly would probably be the critical sex consciousness or critical uh, gender consciousness, which is where we get a lot of this new, very radical LGBT philosophies. Uh, um, it used, you know, LGBT just used to be about some people are gay, some people are lesbian, some people are trans. We're born that way, just let us live our lives in peace. These days, it's not about that. It's this radical theory of um, gender as a social construct, and there's all these neo-genders and neo-pronouns, and sexuality and gender orientation is malleable, and that it's influenced by your environment. Therefore, people just need to unlearn or deconstruct their heteronormative uh, preferences, which is uh, conversion therapy. We see people on the left now and all of the, a lot of non-binary activists and neo-gender activists that are um, claiming that people need to, uh, or they can change their sexual orientation, and they should. Uh, that, you know, I have seen uh, my gay and lesbian brothers and sisters harassed by these radical trans and non-binary activists. There's uh, bi erasure because they want to get rid of bisexual because bisexual means two. And if you're acknowledging there's two genders instead of 500 million, then you're being transphobic. So the LGBT community is a mess. Let me just tell you, it is a dumpster fire right now. Um, I don't think, I don't think you really need to hear, <laughs> hear that from me. You probably know yourself. Um, and then the, the third, the third main group of the critical consciousness is the critical class consciousness. We don't hear much about that these days. That's, that's a lot of, that's like last century, you know, communism and the proletariat and the bourgeoisie and the capitalism and the revolution and these days you get, you know, the Bernie Sanders people, you know, talking about the millionaires and the billionaires and all of that. But for the most part, right now, the left has adopted and promoted critical class and gender and sex consciousness. Now, I'm firmly against this because we are people, we are individuals, we are not our labels. And just because I happen to be um, a transsexual woman, just because I happen to be a Hindu person, just because I happen to be a formerly homeless person, like, that doesn't define me. Like, those are just descriptors. Like, the I, the self, like, I am beyond those things. So I need you to see beyond those things instead of just seeing me as some poor, oppressed, victimized little trans person because I'm not, that's not what I am. Um, so my main issue with this critical consciousness when it's dividing up people into different groups and different um, <sighs> mapping people out on a scale of oppressed and privileged, um, when you do that, you are, you are sacrificing mutual respect because to be able to mutually respect someone and ha like have an honest conversation or relationship with someone, you have to come on level playing ground and see each other as, as equals. If you're put placing people as privileged and you're placing people as oppressed, at most maybe you can get some superficial tolerance, but you'll never have equality and mutual respect. So. For all of the people that are being labeled uh, or identify as, you know, privileged, like a lot of these uh, very guilty white people or guilty rich people or guilty um, like straight people, they, they have all of this shame um, and this guilt and they feel bad for being privileged and they're up here and they think all the other people are down here. So this privileged person is not going to be able to have the correct perspective on someone from here because when you're looking down you're only going to be able to patronize and tokenize and at the worst fetishize and then if you're down here and you identify as an oppressed person or a victim everyone up here 
you're just going to become embittered and resentful of everyone up here. So that's why I think um, what you know what the left used to preach about equality and judging people as an individual and judging them by the content of their character, it levels the playing field instead of mapping people out and weighing all of their oppression points, uh, you know, race oppression points or income oppression points or gender oppression points, like it's just ridiculous. Um, so this is a very divisive uh, ideology. Um, right now we don't need more division, we need unity. Um, and that's why I wholeheartedly and fully reject this critical consciousness, um, which has infected every element of the left. Um, it's very unfortunate, but things have gotten to the point now where people are getting doxxed. They are getting assaulted. Um, here in Oregon, where I live, there have been people drug out of their homes. There have been people shot in the street of Portland for supporting President Trump. Um, there have been LGBT people that don't agree with the leftist narrative that have been threatened and assaulted. So this leftist ideology does not bring people together. It's not fixing anything. It's not helping anyone. And please understand, especially here on the West Coast, it's been um, pretty horrifying to see but there are many radical leftists that um, you know, will claim to be BLM and pro-black people and people of color, but the moment that they come up against a black person that disagrees with them, they will call that person an Uncle Tom. Or if they come up against uh, a gay person that disagrees, they're just, uh, it's internalized homophobia and you're a self-hating gay person. Or if you're a transgender person like me and you disagree with them, then it's, it's internalized transphobia and you just hate yourself. That's the only reason you disagree. Um, and people are, are getting violent here. It's quite scary. Um, people are losing their minds. There is increasingly less and less and less room for uh, nuance and increasingly less um, amounts of patience and compassion that people have for themselves or for others. Anyways, to finish off my last thoughts, um, I just like to say, um, as someone who spent years on the left, who's very familiar with the left, who has lived and worked with people in the radical left, I'm telling you that this is a dangerous philosophy. This is not something that you want to take on for yourself, um, and it's not going to help anybody in the long run. It's a divisive. A dualistic system that will never bring unity for anyone um, so we need to get our act together and be able to come together as Americans to have nuanced conversations so things don't um, continue to escalate into a civil war because from my perspective here as an Oregonian it seems very very uh, likely that a civil war could or uh, will break out regardless of um, regardless of how the, the, the presidential election goes. Um, so anyways, um, thank you for listening. Uh, thank you very much. I hope that my story and maybe some of my experiences um, were helpful to you or maybe they could be helpful to someone else that's um, you know on the fence about leaving the left. But um, it just goes to show that um, you could be a transgender person, you can be a biracial person, um, you could be so many different things. Um, that doesn't mean that the left is entitled to your vote or that you have to um, stay tied to the Democrats or stay to um, the American left. Um, so with that, um, again, uh, thank you. Please stay safe. Um, please take care of yourself and your loved ones and stay the heck away from critical consciousness. <laughs> okay? Bye-bye. Hare Krishna. For more great videos, download the Walkaway Social app at walkawaysocial.com. Share your testimonial and join our community.